So apologies, I forgot to hit record earlier apparently, but what I've done is I've stuffed the board with everything except the uh, floppy disk controller, which is here. I, there's no reason to have it in. For the ICs that had the highly oxidized pins like the uh, PIOs, the CTC and th this row of DRAM was especially bad. Uh, I used one of these little steel brushes, like we've looked at a couple times already, steel wire brush, and it cleaned the leads up pretty well. Uh, the DRAMs are all back in the original position they were originally. This is the DRAM that had the minus 5 not hooked up. It may be damaged because of that, I don't know. Uh, I've gone ahead and just kludged up some, a composite video output here to a composite monitor. I'm getting something on it, but it doesn't have sync. And I'm not really sure what's going on. And I played with, you know, inverting the sync, all those kinds of things, and I just can't get the composite to sync. Uh, and I don't know if it's an issue with the monitor, with the board. Uh, again, I didn't have the video on. I should have. I went through the entire video chain circuit from the oscillator all the way to the final drives and looked for everything that should be clocking. Did that with a logic probe, and everything was clocking. I didn't, you know, look at timings or anything. Uh, but anyhow, I wanted to get a kind of a final current draw here, minus, of course, the floppy disk controller. I don't need it in at the moment. Uh, I think it was drawn about 1.35 amps before the DRAM went in. So this is probably going to get me above 1.5 amps. I guess we'll find out. So let's drop in power. Yeah, right at 1.5 amps. So I think in the manual they actually called for a 1.5 amp 5 volt supply. With it drawn 1.5 amps, that would be uh, pretty hard on that power supply. This is, I think, good for 3 amps or more. Uh, 5 amps. So this supply is not being taxed at this point even. Uh, again, I've got video that makes no sense. Uh, it's almost like the sinks are incorrect. I'm going to have to get the scope up here and actually look at the video signal, see if I can figure out what's messed up on it. Uh, like I, said, I don't know that the system ever actually worked. I base that on the fact that this DRAM wasn't soldered correctly. The minus 5 wasn't soldered in. Uh, so most likely it didn't work. I know if PFM is running when I checked earlier, the chip selects were clocking, which makes me think it's trying to do something out of it. One, two, let's see, 221, 20. It's clocking, chip enable, and there's output enable. Well, output enable is always high. 22, 21, 20, 19, 18, right? Oh, there it is. Let's see, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. 1920. What am I doing wrong here? Have I forgotten the 2716 pin out? Pins 18 and 20 are the enables. Four, twenty-three, twenty-two, twenty-one, twenty. I swear I saw clocking on both. Nineteen, eighteen. Eighteen is always high. Hmm. Let's uh, reset the system. I guess I should have hooked up the reset switch. Uh, twenty-four, twenty-three, twenty-two, twenty-one, twenty. So we do, I do see the highlight on the logic probe does something when I hit reset, so yeah, when I first hit it, output enable clocks. So my understanding is PFM copies itself up into high RAM and then takes itself off the bus. So in the following video, after this little piece I'm injecting here, 
I'm going to get several things wrong. Uh, I've worked a lot with the uh, big board since I've shot that video and I've learned several things using it. So one of the things is I do have the system running. Uh, at least I can get into the PFMEM monitor and do memory testing. And as part of that memory testing, I've been able to identify the banks of RAM uh, and the bits that each column here, each row represents. So uh, in the video, I've got the board position so that the lower left-hand corner has the DRAM in it. And that's what this drawing here represents, lower left-hand corner of the board and the DRAM. So you'll see here I've marked out the address ranges. The lower 16K of RAM is this block. Here, this is the next 16K up, this is the next 16K up, and this is the final upper 16K of memory. So this is the DRAM that had that uh, pin 1 down here not soldered, the minus 5 volt rail. And because the PFM monitor power up copies itself into the upper bank of RAM, I would have to say this board never ran. It, you, know, you know, it was never operational. There was no indication that pin had ever been soldered. Uh, so... I suspect that they got to the point where they couldn't get PFM to start up on it and eventually set it aside, which is, is kind of sad, but that just seems to be the reality to me. So by pulling individual RAMs out of sockets, that's how I was able to identify this, is it would come back and give me an address and a bit failure and I'd say, oh, you know, with this RAM out, uh, you, you know, that was in this address bank here and it was data zero or bit zero that was missing. So something I did a lot of head scratching on, if you look up here at data 6 and data 7, is according to the PFM output, this set of DRAMs right here is data 7, and this set of DRAMs is data 6, which means they're out of sequential order. It's not surprising, going to be an easy layout mistake to make. I haven't seen anything that comments on that, but there may be something later on. Uh, in like the user group newsletters, uh, I haven't got through them all yet. But this seems to be the current state of my board, at least. Uh, you know, whether somebody was has done something I haven't spotted yet to swap these, I don't know. But I'm confident from my board this is how it's laid out, and that's probably true, at least for the same version of boards as mine. There may be versions of the board I'm not aware of. So in the video, you're going to see me call this the lower 16K block. It's not. It's the upper 16K block. So just keep in mind the correct layout here. Lower, next up, next up, upper 16K. Uh, the data bits won't really matter, I don't think, in that conversation. But I just wanted to inject this here so you were aware of what's correct, at least for my board. So I believe PFM may be running here. So... This is the lowest bank of RAM. So looking at the schematic, I believe this is the lowest bank, this is the highest bank. And that may be why the system at least partially ran before or even ran. I, that desoldered pin bothers me. Uh, but my understanding is, so there's a bank select going on here. There's the lower 16K of RAM, this bank right here, from address 0000 to... No, this is the upper bank of RAM. Let me reset that upper bank of RAM. Runs from 0C... Hex C000 to hex FFFF is what's in this bank. My, the PFM ROM, and I believe the video RAM can be mapped into the lower 16K of, of memory space. Uh, and that's the power-up condition where this ROM is sitting right at address 0000. So on re reset, the Z80 fetches instruction at 0000 and begins execution. And what PFM does is copy itself to the upper bank of RAM, then toggle a bit that basically says turn this lower bank on uh, and disable this ROM off the bus and, and I think that hides the video RAM as well. You can bring the video RAM back onto the Z80 bus by moving that bit the other direction and then the CPU can manipulate it and take it off and so what I'm seeing here makes sense to me and that is so there's 21, 20, 19, 18. If you watch the pulse LED when I reset you'll see it blink very shortly. Hopefully the video caught it again and I do believe that is the PFM monitor copying itself out to high RAM. So I guess I will wrap this one up.
and I'll see you in a future video.